Hello, can you see me? Is this better? Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> It's okay. I'll just edit these. I can cut them. Part of the reason. I don't know if you can hear it. Collect any prints at the scene. Oh, but my girls right. are listening to true crime crush. podcasts what? while they make no. all the pretty what? flowers. No. You see, they expect bunch of weirdos. Look at them. There. <laughs> Friday here at the farm. Uh, two of our staff members are in. It is an absolute chaotic day because we have so many bouquets that we are making uh, for the farmer's market tomorrow. So what's very cool about what we do and possibly a little different from most flower farmers is we supplement some of what we cannot grow with our wholesaler. I personally really like doing our floral business this way uh, partially because it allows us to support another local business. We have a great relationship with our wholesalers so that they know we prefer to have Ontario grown or Canadian grown flowers first. That allows us to ensure that we are supporting our own economy before we are getting flowers in that are grown outside of Canada. The biggest exception to that rule, of course, is roses. Everybody loves a good rose. For us personally, what we have decided to do is to import our roses for our orders. Uh, we have lots of brides who love to have roses in their their wedding bouquets. I personally love having roses in the house. I think they smell so sweet. But you will notice that we do not bring just your traditional rose, red rose in our uh, shop either. We love to have stuff that is unique. All that said, unrelated to what we are doing today, which is building 40 market bouquets this afternoon, 10 mason jars, uh, and an eclectic amount of other things, plus what we like to call forest choice bouquets. Now, we are doing less today than we normally would on a Friday. That is because it is going to be rainy tomorrow, so I don't want to prepare more flowers than we necessarily have to. But at the same time, corn stand season has started in our area and we bring our flowers to our local corn stand. The old drive plot that we grow on, which you guys have not seen yet, is actually um, the property of the corn farmers that we send our flowers to at market. So they opened yesterday, it's going to be a busy summer, so even if we end up having a terrible sales day tomorrow with the market, all is not lost because those flowers are going to get rewrapped and sent off to the corn stands in the afternoon. So come join us today, it's gonna be fun. You're going to see Natalie, you're gonna see McKenna, you're gonna see some time-lapse bouquet making and it's gonna be a great day. So. Come on down. Thank you. Say hi to Adrian. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna show you right now kind of how we make our market bouquets. So we've used craft paper, so it's actually 18 inch squared uh, craft paper that we purchased from Uline. Uh, we use stickers. Uh, we have stickers that are branded that we typically put on the front. Uh, we also use a staple, stapler, and elastic bands. I had to think that through. So yeah, so we'll take you through kind of like how we make our market bouquet. Uh, the amount of stems that we use per market bouquet makes it feel full. Now our price point for our market bouquet is $20 each. We also typically uh, do a florist choice bouquet which runs at $35, so it's a little bit more expensive. And then we bring usually 10 to 12 
uh, 500 mil mason jars that are done as well to market on Saturday mornings. So we are going to do a time lapse through, but I will show you how we make each individual bouquet as well so that you can see just the amount of stems that we put in um, to make it feel full, but also so that you are kind of creating the best value for your market bouquet, I think is really important. I find a lot of times uh, new farmer florists, what they typically do is they fill way too many stems on their market bouquet and they just don't charge enough. So because we also wholesale, I know the cost per stem on the wholesale market essentially of what I'm bringing into my studio which means that when I'm making my market bouquets up, I also know the wholesale cost of something like a zinnia stem in the like small Oklahoma mix versus what you would charge for a zinnia in the Bennery. Typically the markup on a flower should be anywhere between 2.5 to 3.5 depending where you live. So we're in Ontario, Canada, we're in southwestern Ontario, Canada. One thing I figured out very quickly is that the markup on flowers for me isn't going to be what it is in Toronto and that's simply because I am from a small town <laughs> and we have to know our clients so we usually mark up anywhere between 2.2 to 2.5 for market bouquets now that is different when we're doing custom arrangements wedding work things like that um, but for new florists it's really really important to new flower farmers to not undercut yourself uh, you want to be able to make money on your flowers and I find that your first year can be really expensive because you have things like your paper that you need to purchase you have uh, you know all of those behind the scenes your business cards your stickers if you're using those you have you know maybe you've got marketing that you're working on flyers all of those sorts of things delivery gas you have to incorporate those into your price points when you are building your bouquets for us the market works really well but I know what my base cost per bouquet is so that when I'm adding on for instance the additional cost of labor um, then we are making a profit at the end and that's the only way you're going to be able to maintain a sustainable flower farming business is one are you able to pay your employees a reasonable sustainable livable wage uh, which we make a point of doing and two is your business making money reinvesting into itself so that you can do things like we did this year like buy a cooler um, so all things to keep in mind but we will show you how to make our bouquets I'm gonna get the studio set up So all of these are going to get turned into market bouquets this afternoon. The colors are great. We have some mums mixed in there as well from our wholesaler. And one of my favorite things actually is that we bring in Alstromeria from one of our actual very local growers. He has greenhouses here in our hometown and so we're able to support another local farmer which I I absolutely love. I think that's fabulous. Really crushing hard on these cosmos. Oh, they're so pretty. So the first part of bouquet making is I always have a recipe that I'm working with for market bouquets. This week, because we are harvesting farm flowers, my recipe is actually going to be one zinnia, one elstromeria, one stem of mums, palms, like the multiple, um, the multiple mums. One stem of solidago, and one stem of celosia. So that should bring me up to six or seven stems. I, I might add a few more pieces of like cosmos in there just to kind of fill it out and give it some whimsy. But essentially what that does is actually just, it creates me a recipe that I'm working with because then the goal is to be able to move through uh, bouquet making as quickly as possible because the less time you spend making bouquets the more money you make because you are lowering the amount of your time and your employees time that it's actually going to cost you to make those bouquets so that's a really important step one of the things that we always do ahead of time I don't know if you can see uh, McKenna here has pre-folded all of our papers 
priced everything and as well added in our little flower care card. Um, so that's all done now and we can just get to the dirty work of actually creating our flower bouquets. So I'm gonna set you down there. It's consistent, but you can see behind me too, I have all the flowers kind of laid out. Um, so it's really easy for me to just spin around, make the bouquet, add the stems, pass it to McKenna. So we'll do one kind of slowly so that you can see exactly what we're doing. Um, and then we'll do a time lapse, cause those are fun. All right, so first up, we have our zinnia. With zinnias, we always want to make sure that all of the foliage is uh, taken off of the zinnia. Um, nice long stem, you can see these are uh, coming on really nicely on the farm, which is exciting. So love that. Uh, but then with these, because zinnias are very notorious for making water dirty, um, what we want to do is make sure all of that extra foliage is completely taken off so that it's you know less probable that it's going to cause problems for our customers later. So first, we take that zinnia. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a stem of mums. I like these ones because they look like little baby sunflowers. We're gonna add it in. Take our stem of solidago. Solidago is also goldenrod. Now this type of uh, goldenrod is not the one everybody typically has allergies to. It's forest goldenrod, but this is grown in Canada. I personally love. We're gonna add that in. So now we've got that. It's gonna get its feature flower. So it's feature flower here, sunflower. So we got some nice yellow going on there. Great. We're gonna balance that out with some uh, probably pink or purple Alstroemeria. It's got a really nice pink Alstro this week. Um, Elstro is best when it looks like this, which is kind of droopy and sad, but actually this is the best way to get it because those flowers haven't opened up yet and what you want is for those flowers to open for your customer. So this, typically you'll put that on the other side. So you can see from the top, it's starting to look nice and full. Then we are going to add the Cosmos. Now, McKenna, when she cuts Cosmos, so the next thing we do is Cosmos. So when McKenna cuts Cosmos, she likes to take an entire branch. You can see how huge that is. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is pull those bottom stems off. We just drop things on the floor here because we have a staff who loves to uh, clean. We're going to take that. We'll add that in. So add, that'll add also a little bit of height to it, like so, and then because I got a crap ton of them, literal measurement, I'm going to add in another zinnia. Let's put in, this one looks nice, it's white. So there we go. There is our $20 market bouquet. So you've got about seven stems, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes we would also add some extra greenery to this, but the Solidago and the Cosmos are kind of adding that extra little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it, we're going to put an elastic band on it, and then the Kenna is going to wrap it. I find it really helpful to have compost so that not everything ends back up in the garbage. Big, thick elastic band. What you're gonna do, practice this method. You're gonna pull it up a couple strong stems at the bottom. You're gonna wrap it around your strong stems at the bottom. And then you're basically just going to loop it up the other side. So it kind of creates, holds them in place. And then I'm gonna pass it off to McKenna. All right. As we have already explained, we have our paper folded, we have our flower care card, and we have it priced. So now, put it in, usually leave about that much in the water so the paper doesn't get soggy. Fold one side, fold the other. Try to get that tapered look. We use staples. Don't staple any of the blooms. And then we take one of our Stickers 
And we just reinforce that a little bit and advertise it. So if you hold that up, it looks really beautiful inside of the bouquet. Looks nice and full from the front, but you don't have any of the flowers getting smushed, which is really important. And the key to that is actually folding that up just a smidge so that you can create a taper on the bottom um, while not folding it up all the way because then you have further to go. So yeah, so that looks gorgeous. Oh, so pretty. So now we're gonna do about 40 more of those. <laughs> Here are our finished market bouquets. It's been exactly 40 minutes. We did 35 market bouquets, the two of us, in those 40 minutes. I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. So these will go into the cool basement overnight since I don't have enough room currently in the fridge. You can see we price the tops there. Oh so that uh, customers know exactly how much the bouquets cost. But they're just, they're feeling like summer. And I love it. So beautiful. We did at the market. We may get rained out, um, and that's okay. It happens. I just really wish I could send that rain to my flower farmer friends in uh, British Columbia because they need it way worse than we do right now. Uh, it, it sucks every Saturday when you lose a sale day, like a very substantial sale day for us to weather. But I would rather rain, I think, over heat. Heat is worse, especially for flowers. So it is. 7 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, we're just about to leave. Well, the girls are just about to leave for the market. Um, we ended up doing a lot less for bouquets this week than we normally would because was, we were fully expecting that it was going to rain. Um, as it turns out, it's not going to be cloudy all morning. So hopefully they do well. Um, keep you updated at the end of the day, but. Uh, like all uh, packed up. Hi Natalie. <laughs> Everyone's tired this morning. Well, it's Sunday, um, and the market did in fact get rained out. They ended up having to come back early. <laughs> we did not hit our sales goal uh, for the weekend at the market, but we did hit it overall. Uh, normally, we try and do between $1,000 to $1,200 each weekend, um, and we did manage to achieve that goal. So, all in all, not a bad weekend. Um, but it would be really nice to have a market that isn't rained out hopefully next week. So there we have it. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you learned something if you're a new flower farmer on how to just do some basic wrapping on your market bouquets. A link below the products that we use. Um, you can order them online. Uh, Uline, especially if you're in Canada, I think they do next day delivery. I know that their delivery fee is expensive, um, but they are some of the best quality craft paper sheets that I've been able to find. And I actually prefer them to using rolls of paper. It just, it goes a lot quicker. You don't have to spend hours like cutting your slices. And honestly, when it comes to things like market bouquets, speed really is your profit. So if you have any questions, you can drop them down below in the comment section. As always, I hope that you like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you everyone. If you have any questions at all about how we do our market bouquets, I would love to answer that, but at least I hope that this video helped you out a little bit. It's They're pretty easy. Um, the key is really just to get that bottom flap folded up um, and you are able to create yourself a nice craft sleeve. As always, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye guys. I can't like not say um. I say like a lot. I do say like a lot. <laughs>